San Diego State isn't a Pac-12 team. They might never be one day. They might just be later than we think. But gosh, they just feel, because of this whole debacle, like a perfect fit. You are Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked on Pac-12. I am your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day, and your number one source to stay up to date with our media rights free and beloved Conference of Champions. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, please, and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. San Diego State, some actual football talk. I know, crazy. Things like who could win the Pac-12 in 2023? ESPN's Football Power Index has some uh, predictions along that front. Hint, hint, they like USC. And a question about realignment for down the line that I'm sure just by me putting it over here on the rundown for today's show is going to drive some of you absolutely crazy. I urge you to wait to hear what my opinions actually are, but I just know by putting it there, For those of you listening on podcasts, it's lure Big 12 schools one day, question mark? Yeah, I know. It's going to drive people nuts. But anyway, that's kind of how it goes here. All right, so speaking of being driven nuts, San Diego State had this whole saga. For those of you who have uh, been seemingly living under a rock, at least on the realignment front for the last several weeks, they notified the Mountain West they intended to leave. They didn't get an invite from the Pac-12 in time for June 30th, which then doubled their exit fee to $34 million from 17. They didn't want to pay that, so they notified the Mountain West they'd be staying. They could still leave. They'd have to pay more. They could join later. A lot of different ways that could go. If you want all the thoughts and reaction to that, go check out uh, Saturday's episode of the show. But the reason I say that they are just such a perfect fit because of this whole debacle, is we in the Pac-12 over the last 15 years, from Larry Scott to yes, even now, have just kind of internalized this feeling of, you know what, we're never going to be able to have nice things, or we can't do it the easy way, we can't do it the right way, or the best way. We don't do this. We don't do that the way that other conferences do. We're just not like that. It's not run as well. It's hectic. It's chaotic. So I was thinking about a line from Ratatouille, which is my favorite Disney Pixar film of all time, by the way. Debate that in the comment section. I mean, you know, drop some comments about realignment. Best Disney Pixar movie ever. It can be Disney only, Pixar only, or Disney Pixar, whatever. A lot of good choices there. Anyway, Ratatouille is my personal favorite. And there's a scene, or just like a moment more, that that I was thinking of when when, uh, thinking about San Diego State and this whole like, yeah, we want to go to the Pac-12. We feel like we're going to be there. We're strongly into... I mean, there were public statements from the athletic director and president about a, a, an imminent move to a Power 5 conference, and they stated it, they wanted it to be the Pac-12, and then it didn't happen by June 30th. The scene from Ratatouille, I think of, is after Linguini accidentally makes the soup correctly because Remy actually does it, right? The, the the rat, who's the main character in that movie, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Anyway, so after that happens, Chef Skinner, the head chef at, at Gusteau's restaurant, doesn't want Linguini to succeed because he was hired on as a garbage boy. He doesn't want him to, you know, be that because it's not, you know, the way that things are done. And he has a, he has a line in there when Linguini comes back and he gets right down close to him. And he's a really short little guy, kind of like me. He's a short guy. I mean, I'm taller than him, I think. He's a short guy and he gets down. And he says, welcome to hell. That's the Pac-12 in a nutshell, is it not? Like, how, how else can you properly describe what we have been going through on this show and just as fans outside of the show for the last several months, hearing over and over again, the deal's about to be done, and then the deal's not done. 
and hearing over and over again yeah well these these are the top expansion candidates yeah they feel they're making indications publicly that they're about to join yeah it looks like this is gonna get and then it just doesn't get done this is why san diego state is a perfect fit in the pac-12 because they've already had an introduction to what it's really like to be in the pac-12 the question of hey why can't you announce expansion teams and then do the media deal wouldn't that have you know negated the, the the need for san diego state to issue the second letter saying they're going to stay in the mountain west and save them that embarrassment yeah it would have yeah but this is the pac-12 <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do like what are you gonna do at this point so that is why and am i being facetious here partially yeah but I also thought it was kind of funny because <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? It's perfect because whatever mismanagement or mishap or disadvantage the Pac-12, you know, has come to fruition in the future if San Diego State's a part of it, you know what they're going to look back and say? Their fans or their administrators or their coaches or whatever, like, it's not as bad as that time. We said we were going to leave the Mountain West and then didn't. And then we had to write a letter saying, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to stay here for the time being. It's not going to be as bad as that. Anyway, that's a, that's my rhetorical rant of the day. I call it the RR, the rhetorical rant. Um, but, you know, it's just, it all, it all, it's all falling into place, right? Everything works. It just, <laughs> it just all seems to work perfectly in there. Uh, anyway, on the realignment front, interesting question here. Uh, this is from Steve. You can all be a part of the mailbag, whoever you are, whatever conference or team you support. YouTube comments, hit me up on there. I monitor those every day. Goodness gracious, there were a lot of those over the weekend. But people like the show, and I very much appreciate that. Drop a one in the YouTube comments, that being a question, or hit me up on Twitter, at Smalls underscore 55, or at LO underscore Pac-12. Those be the handles. This from Steve. Not exactly a Pac-12 question, but I'm going to make it one. But there's a rumor that when SDSU goes to the Pac-12, LOL, I think, <laughs> North Dakota State is rumored to be their replacement. Do you think they have a chance to compete for a Mountain West championship immediately? So how am I going to turn this into a Pac-12 Pac question? First of all, could North Dakota State compete for a Mountain West championship immediately? Yes, absolutely. North Dakota State, for those of you who are unaware and do not follow FCS football as I do, which is closer than most, I will say. They are the Alabama of the FCS. If you go back and look at the FCS national champions for the last 15 years, you are going to see a lot of North Dakota State in there. They are a dominant, dominant program. They actually went to Arizona a season ago, right here in the Pac-12, right here, right now. A UCLA team, or an Arizona team that beat UCLA who is seen once again as a conference contender going into this year. And they were a season ago and suffered that disappointing loss because Arizona was good enough to beat them. And Arizona finished five and seven. And if Arizona had just scheduled a cupcake instead of Mississippi State the way that they should, I'm saying they should be scheduling Mississippi State with a home and home, not scheduling a cupcake. But if they'd done that, they would have been a bowl team a year ago. Jaden Delora, that offense in a bowl game? Whew, sign me up for that. North Dakota State, however went to Tucson, darn near beat Arizona on their home field. That was an ascending Arizona football team. Depending on how it goes this year, they could continue to be an ascending football team. And North Dakota State, as an FCS program, walked in there, and they were taking not just anybody down to the wire, they were taking a respectable Pac-12 team, a team that put up 39 points on Washington on the road a season ago. A team that beat a UCLA team that won, that at one point in time was in the top 10 nationally when they started 6-0. Those are things that happened a year ago. So yes, North Dakota State could compete there. Spencer, how are you turning this into a Pac-12 question? Well, I will indeed tell you. that FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And you right now can take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right, just 20 bucks, you throw it down, and you land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line, the over-under, who's going to hit the first home run. If someone's going to throw a perfect game, hey, you never know. Hadn't happened in 11 years until it did a couple weeks ago. You can bet all that on FanDuel all on an app, that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid 
instantly. There's no better place to bet Major League Baseball than on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, we've got our second segment set. We're ready to keep things going. So the North Dakota State question is actually an interesting one for the Pac-12. So I am not suggesting that they should go out and add North Dakota State as one of their expansion teams. That would, I believe, be unprecedented to go from FCS to the Power Five. Now, FCS to FBS, that happens all the time. Several schools doing that this year, as a matter of fact. Sam Houston State out in Texas, New Mexico State, they have now joined Conference USA after that league got raided uh, by the American Conference, which got raided by the Big 12. So you see how all these dominoes kind of just, you know, continue and yada, yada, yada. So what I say with North Dakota State is one day I could see them be, I'm talking way in the future here. Are they probably happy? Being an FCS power right now? Yes. Do I suspect that one day they will get the urge as a university to make the jump to Power 5? Or to, to, to FBS, rather? Also, yes. Now, when they do that, they would probably be in a Sun Belt, a Conference USA, an American, something like that, depending on you know how the conferences view where they're at athletically. But with their football program where it is, and that being the most important sport... I would not rule out one day. I'm talking, again, way, 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 way in the future. That North, like if the pack just continues to exist 20 years from now, and you told me in 15, North Dakota State was a target for the pack. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. It would be a branding play rather than a market play. But could it happen? Yeah, because clearly they know how to build a football program that wins at a high level. And it turns out, that's kind of what you're looking for here. And, and they are a team, they are a program that if they were to make the jump, by the way, James Madison is was another really, really high level FCS program. They joined, I believe, uh, uh, Conference USA. Let me check that real quick. But they, they joined the FBS a year ago. They joined the Sun Belt, James Madison did. They're in the Sun Belt Conference. There was a point in time where they poked their head into the top 25 poll a season ago. That's a thing that happened. It was there. I remember seeing it. So the idea that those sorts of programs can't one day make themselves attractive, I don't think is ridiculous. Now, James Madison, is that a school that is, you know, because they did that, ready to join a Power Five conference? No. But if you go to a conference like the Sun Belt or the American or Conference USA or the Mountain West or something, they could definitely be a fit in the Mountain West. We know that those schools or conferences or schools in those conferences can then become candidates to one day perhaps build themselves into it. I'm just saying to watch them. I'm not saying that's five years away. I don't think it's even 10 years away. But in the 15 to 20 range, if they ever get the urge, yeah, I could absolutely, absolutely see that happening. Are they a big market? No. Are their academics up to the smell test? Probably not at this point in time. But again, this is like super, super long term. So North Dakota State was brought up. I found that interesting. And yes, I think they could compete for a Mountain West championship really, really quickly. They've had a number of good coaches there. Like that thing is a machine at the FCS level. They are top dogs down there. They 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 know how to win football games. All right. Who's going to win the Pac-12 this year? I don't really know. ESPN's football power index would like you to think that it's USC against the field. I am here to tell you, I also hold that opinion. I know. I know. It feels icky. It feels wrong because they are the orchestrators of this whole conference instability thing. It's their final year and everything like that. But ESPN thinks USC is a massive favorite. They were, of course, playing in the conference championship game a year ago. They were, of course, one defensive stop, surprise, surprise, away from being 12-0 going into that game when they lost at uh, Rice Heckles. They are right now, according to ESPN Football Power Index, not a perfect metric by any means. And I'm not saying USC is the only team that can win it. But that particular index believes that USC's uh, football, I, I, I guess it's you know percentage chance to win the conference. USC is at 50.2%. 
Nobody else is at 20. Your audio didn't cut out. I was just letting that kind of sit and marinate for a moment. Nobody else is at 20. Is it going to come down to their defense? Yeah, probably. Usually does with a Lincoln Riley team. They've added a couple notable players on the defensive line. Alex Grinch has to coach up to secondary and get them playing and performing better and able to not be relying on turnovers the way they were a season ago. I said at the time, hey, that's not sustainable. It's going to come back to bite you. I got a lot of pushback on that. And lo and behold, Utah burned them for 43 points and however many points in the Pac-12 championship game. And they weren't able to get stops in key situations when the other team wasn't turning the ball over. But they feel, the ESPN metrics here, supremely confident in USC. 50%. Utah is the next closest at 17%. Oregon, 16.9%. Oregon State, 7.6. Washington, 6.4. <laughs> Excuse me? Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing that they put on there. UCLA, 1.4%. I think that's about right. Arizona at 0.2%. Who's coming in at number seven? <laughs> Look at the Cow Bears. The Cow Bears. This is a Cow Bears fan podcast, obviously. 0.2%. Washington State, 0.1%. And 0% chance for Colorado, Arizona State, and Stanford. Now, is ESPN's power, football power index perfect? Is it all-knowing? No, not necessarily. Do I think USC should be the favorite? Yes, I do. Because I know that Lincoln Riley's a really good coach. And before people hop in the comments and say, he's never won a college football playoff game. No, but he's been there four times. That's not bad. You know what he did in order to get to the college football playoff in each of those occasions? Three, four, I forget how many it is. You know what he did every single time? Yeah, he won the conference. This is a guy who, when given a full season of college football as a head coach, has never won fewer than 10 games. And he went 9-2 and two in the COVID-shortened year, beat Florida in, I think it was the, the Sugar Bowl or something like that. This guy knows how to win a lot of football games. It's all he's ever done. And he has, easily, his best quarterback. Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray were number one overall picks because they went to Lincoln Riley. Jalen Hurts was taken in the second round because he went to Lincoln Riley. Caleb Williams is better than all of those guys. He is a better quarterback prospect in the NFL. I think he is a better player. Of course, Jalen was a Heisman finalist. The other two were Heisman Trophy winners. I think that Caleb Williams is a step above them as a prospect and as a Heisman Trophy winner. He is sensationally good. And here's the thing. Does it come down to the defense for USC? Yes, it does. Absolutely. We all know that. But you don't need them to be great. To win the Pac-12, you don't need them to be great. USC's defense a year ago at times was abysmal. Were they ever going to guard Dalton Kincaid in Salt Lake City that night? Or were they just going to let him roam free? Because it kind of felt like the latter more often than not. Like, oh, you would think at one point in time, Grinch would have made an adjustment and said, hey, let's just double team 86 and make him throw to anybody else. Nope, that didn't happen. And if it was happening, that's a pretty poorly executed double team because he went absolutely crazy. Cam Rising wasn't looking anywhere else. Yeah, they just couldn't stop him. Maybe they didn't have the personnel. Maybe they didn't have the scheme. Maybe they didn't have both. Whatever the case, they could not stop him. But we're not asking, or USC fans that is, Alex Grinch to build USC into a powerhouse defense. It's never going to happen when you have the sort of offense that USC does that is fast, that is explosive, that puts your defense on the field a lot and doesn't give them a lot of time to rest. It's just the nature of those sorts of teams, and that's fine. You just need them to be average. You need to be able to make normal stops that are not turnovers. That's not asking a ton. It's asking something, but it's not asking a ton. Now, do I feel that 50% for USC and nobody else at 20 is a little bit wider than the Spencer McLaughlin power metrics or football power index would probably have it at? Yeah, I would say so. But that gap being that big is pretty darn noticeable to me because that is a that is it. No one else is even at half 
They think they know something they might not. They loved Texas football a year ago. They ended up 8-5. and five. They thought they were a top 10 team all season long. They went 8-5. and five. This stuff is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But that, that figure about USC is telling of where it should be. So the fact that there are only three teams at 10%, I find that to be mm, iffy at best. Oregon State above Washington. I think I can justify that from the data, from you know defending the numbers here. Oregon State has got maybe the most favorable schedule of any of the six contenders, which according to FanDuel's win totals are USC, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Oregon State, and UCLA who all have win totals of eight and a half or higher. Oregon State's got a super favorable schedule. I think that plays into why they're above Washington, who they lost to a year ago. Easily could have won that game. Go either way game. Washington has to go down to Reeser this year, which is going to be back at full capacity. The renovation looks great. I, I, I find this list to be mostly pretty accurate, right? Give, you know, less than a percent to Arizona, Cal, Washington State. Uh, I am surprised that Arizona and Cal... We're above Washington State. I mean, it's 0.2 and 0.1%, so what are we talking about here? But I do feel like Washington State's better than both of those teams going into the season, though I think any could sneak up and uh, make a bowl game. Uh, Washington State did a year ago. I expect them to again. But UCLA being the lowest of the six contenders, completely agree with that. Washington being fifth, feels a touch low, might be reflective of, of their schedule here, but... You know, Washington at six, Utah at 17, Oregon basically at 17, Oregon State at seven and a half, and then USC at 50. Is it USC against the field? That's the way it looks right now. Is that what our expectations should be? I think kind of yes. Not to this extent, but does it feel like everyone is going against USC? Yes, I absolutely feel that way. Because of the most important position, USC is about as good as as you could possibly be. And that's pretty, pretty darn tough. Curious is all your thoughts on that sort of stuff, though. Again, ESPN FBI to win the Pac-12 this year. USC 50.2%, Utah 17%, Oregon 16.9%, Oregon State 7.6%, Washington 6.4%, UCLA 1.4%. I, I think Washington State and Oregon State are a touch low. I don't think there's that big of a gap between those two schools and the two above them, Oregon and Utah. Uh, and then 0.2% for Arizona and Cal, 0.1% for Washington State, and 0%, 0% for Colorado, Arizona State, and Stanford. I think all those are pretty right. Drop your thoughts in the YouTube comments below or shoot me a note on Twitter at smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore Pac-12. This message from Cody. Hey, Spencer. Started listening to Locked On Pac-12 podcast every day over the last few months. Appreciate you, my man. Assuming the pack only adds two schools right now, <laughs> and that stabilizes the conference. <laughs> Stability. What is that? What are those? Okay, I'm done. Do you think the conference should be, could become successful enough to swipe away a Big 12 school or two, or would they likely have to return to the group of five for future additions? Also, since it somewhat involves the Pac-12 if they start grabbing teams from the Mountain West, does the Mountain West go after someone like New Mexico State, Conference USA versus Mountain West, or do they try to persuade a couple FCS teams like the Montana schools to move up? If I'm the Mountain West, I would be looking at Conference USA. I, I think that's a good... I mean, that's where the American went for, for their latest batch of realignment programs. And I think athletically... The Mountain West and American are pretty comparable. At least they have been for, for a while. Like at their peak, they can put a team in the national championship conversation. Boise State, uh, you know, in, in their heyday. And then, you know, Cincinnati, of course, made the playoff a couple of years ago. So I'd say Conference USA. I'd also look at the Sun Belt, maybe if they wanted to expand their, their geographical reach. Not entirely certain what the Mountain West criteria are with regards to, uh, you know, their presidents and how much they value culture or geography or academics and all that sort of stuff. But what, what you have to remember with those conferences, they don't have nearly as much money as the Power Five. So when you're talking about adding schools from further away, someone's going to have to foot the bill for the travel costs there. And money is not quite as readily available at the G5 level as it is at the Power 5 level. In fact, there is a Grand Canyon-sized chasm in the amount of money they get there. The Mountain West media deal, you know, we're talking about can the Pac-12 get to $30 million, and that's so low compared to the other Power 5s. 
the Mountain West media deal, I think pays somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight per school. That's a big gap. There's a, there's a big, big, big gap in, in money there. So I don't think it's quite as easy for them to go all over the place. Although Conference USA, getting Sam Houston in Texas, that's more feasible. New Mexico State is, is kind of right there. Like that's not, you know, a huge geographical reach for them because they already, you know, had some teams in Texas with UTSA, North Texas, and, uh, you know, UAB is, of course, down in Alabama. So not not like a huge, huge jump, but I'm just saying they can't go national, right? They they, they don't really have the, the, the money for, for that sort of stuff. But uh, interesting question there. But to the first one, could they lure or, you know, try to swipe Big 12 schools away? You would have to have for this to happen. I'm not. I'm not saying it, it's impossible, but I'm not banking on this as a Pac-12 fan and someone who wants to see the conference continue to survive, and someone who wants to see all the conferences continue to survive as much as they can. You know, like it very much feels like it's the big two and the next three, which is a term coined on Twitter not long ago by one of you out there. You know who you are. I really like that. The big two, the next three. It's kind of where we're at. So. I could see how this could happen. I don't know that it's like, like the Big 12 basketball wise would have to crater because that's kind of, you know, their big strong brand there. Football wise, they would have to be absolutely awful. The Pac-12 would have to be putting two teams in the playoff every year. You would have to have three teams in the playoff in some seasons. They'd have to dominate the Big 12 in bowl games. I, I think you'd have to have, you know, some more basketball success, turn that around. Like you would have to have utter dominance over that particular conference and i just don't see that happening right especially on the basketball court but even if we're just focusing on football which which is you know the biggest sport to drive realignment presidents vote on realignment i know i know i didn't forget my own golden rule don't get me wrong but for big 12 schools to look at the pack and say boy do we want to be over there the pac 12 would have to separate in a big big way and I'm not saying they can't, you know, in, in six or seven years be thought of as a superior football conference to the Big 12. I think they are more than capable of that. But that gap would have to be monumental. It, it would have to be so large that Big 12 schools felt that they were not able to sell recruits on their schools anymore that they just felt like they were down that they were a little brother conference that they like they would have to get into such a defeatist defeated mindset i i can't see that really happening again there could be a gap but it can't be you know on a scale of one to ten if a reasonable gap to to strive for for the pac-12 to position yourself well for the next round of realignment media rights is like a four or a five this would have to be like a nine or a 10. And I just, I, I don't know if when you look at the brands and teams and, you know, coaches and schools and everything that's remaining in either conference as they go forward without their, uh, their, their, their biggest media draws, you know, the Pac-12 market and the brands of Oklahoma and Texas for, for the Big 12. I don't know that you have, you know, enough in the Pac-12 to just completely dominate like that to where it's, man, we got to be in the Pac-12, right? Because right now, perceptionally, you know, PR, nobody wants to be in the Pac-12. Nobody wants to be near it. I mean, San Diego State and SMU still want to be in, of course, but it's still just a mess, right? Like it's not seen as a desirable place. You'd have to do so much work on that front. I I can't see that happening. I don't think the Pac-12 needs to do that necessarily. I see how it could be advantageous, but then you're undermining the stability of the Big 12 again, and I don't want to do that. Like, I want there to continue to be five conferences. And look, I think in a perfect world, we just revert back to what we had five years ago, right? But that's not going to happen. So going forward, what I would like to see is, frankly, just kind of an us versus them mentality of, all right, it's the big two, it's the next three. We're at a disadvantage here. It stinks, it sucks, but let's make the most of it. And let's see if we three conferences can put together a team that can go out and play with the big boys, that can compete with the heavy hitters. So that's what I, that's what I would most like to see. I don't know that the Pac-12 would necessarily think that way. There are schools like Kansas that they would, uh, you know, maybe consider they're an AAU school, but are there as many institutions in the Big 12 that the big that the Pac-12 presidents would see as a cultural or institutional fit? Maybe not. I'm like there are some. There there are definitely some, 
But I don't know that you could get to the point where the Big 12 schools would want to go elsewhere because it's got to be two-sided, right? Oregon and Washington might want the Big 10. Big 10 has to want them. The Big 10 wants Notre Dame. Notre Dame doesn't want the Big 10, right? This has to be a, you know, it, it, take, it takes two to tango here. And I don't know that you could get to that point. I, I, I would say it's highly unlikely that you'd get there in such a short amount of time. In 15 years, okay, maybe. But again, you just have to establish such utter dominance athletically that the Big 12 schools feel like, hey, we're, we're missing out. Our brand is taking a hit because we're playing in the Big 12. And I think your brand would not only have to thrive, I think the Big 12 brands would have to suffer, right? I think to create that big chasm between the two leagues, everything in the Pac-12 would have to go really, really right, and you'd have to be an ascending conference. And the Big 12 would have to go really, really wrong and be a descending conference. And I don't foresee that happening given the programs that are left in uh, in, in either conference going forward. But interesting question, for sure. Uh, I don't know if people are going to interpret that answer correctly. I'm sure it will get spun in the comment section into, I think the Big 12, or I think that the Pac-12 is going to try and poach uh, Big 12 schools someday. But I look forward to seeing that spin happen in the YouTube comments. So uh, by all means, Drop them, <laughs> drop them below or hit me up on Twitter at smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore pack 12. Appreciate it as always. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. Until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.